Ibrahim Traore has just issued the last and final warning to France. What could happen if France plans to attack Burkina Faso? In the past, such an action might have seemed plausible, but the situation is different now. France may have believed that the leader of Burkina Faso would be intimidated and comply with their demands. However, President Ibrahim Traoré has taken a defiant stance, delivering a speech that exposes France's alleged actions. Moreover, Traoré has promised to share evidence to substantiate his claims, raising concerns about France possibly taking drastic measures before the evidence is released. Could France potentially target Traoré to prevent this evidence from coming to light? In a public address in Ouagadougou, President Traoré made serious allegations against France and its involvement with neighboring countries Ivory Coast and Benin. He claimed that France is colluding with these nations to destabilize Burkina Faso and insisted that his government has evidence to support these assertions, promising to reveal it soon. This speech has sparked significant controversy and raised questions about the geopolitical dynamics in the region. President Traoré's accusations center around alleged French military operations and the roles of Ivory Coast and Benin in these activities. He specifically mentioned a center of operations in Abidjan aimed at destabilizing Burkina Faso, as well as audio recordings of French agents in Benin interacting with terrorist training centers. The implications of these claims are profound, suggesting a deliberate effort to undermine Burkina Faso's sovereignty Historically, France has maintained significant influence over its former colonies in Africa, often intervening in their political and military affairs. The term France Afrique describes the continued economic and political ties between France and its former African colonies, which critics argue perpetuates a form of neo-colonialism. In this context, Traoré's allegations of French interference are seen by some as a continuation of this historical pattern. Traoré's claims are centered around specific allegations of French military bases and operations in Ivory Coast and Benin, which he asserts are being used to train groups and destabilize Burkina Faso. The presence of French military bases in Africa is well documented, with France maintaining several bases across the continent for strategic and security purposes. However, the notion that these bases are being used to support terrorist activities is a grave accusation that requires substantial evidence. In January 2013, France launched Operation Serval in Mali to counter Islamist militant groups that had taken control of northern parts of the country. This operation was followed by Operation Barkhane in August 2014, aimed at combating terrorism across the Sahel region. While these operations were intended to stabilize the region and combat terrorism, they have also sparked significant controversy and criticism. There have been reports and accusations of civilian casualties resulting from French military operations, fueling resentment and mistrust among local populations. President Traoré has hinted at possessing substantial evidence to support his claims against France, including audio recordings and other concrete proof. If he can substantiate these allegations with clear, incontrovertible evidence, it would have significant ramifications. It could lead to international condemnation of France's actions and strain diplomatic relations between France and other African nations. Moreover, it would bolster Traoré's position domestically, portraying him as a leader willing to stand up to powerful foreign influences. The release of this evidence could also prompt investigations by international bodies and human rights organizations. These investigations could validate Traoré's claims or expose discrepancies, thereby influencing public opinion and international policy. Furthermore, the existence of such evidence would necessitate a re-evaluation of France's role in the region, potentially altering alliances and power dynamics. The potential for backlash against France and its allies in the region is significant. If Traoré's evidence holds up under scrutiny, it would likely result in increased anti-French sentiment and calls for greater autonomy from foreign influence across West Africa. This could galvanize other African leaders and populations to push back against perceived neocolonialism. The historical context of French influence in Africa lends credibility to President Ibrahim Traoré's claims. From Algeria to Mali, France has a history of military interventions and covert operations aimed at maintaining its influence. This history of interference, combined with Burkina Faso's strategic importance in the region, suggests that France might indeed have a vested interest in the country's stability or instability.
Traoré's speech taps into a broader narrative of African resistance against neocolonialism. By accusing France of destabilizing his country, he positions himself as a defender of Burkina Faso's sovereignty and independence. This stance resonates with a significant segment of the population that is weary of foreign interference and eager for genuine autonomy. With the historical context and plausibility of these allegations in mind, we now turn to the specific criticisms levied against the leadership of Ivory Coast and Benin. President Traoré's speech did not only target France, he also leveled serious criticisms against the leaders of Ivory Coast and Benin. Traoré accused these leaders of collaborating with France to undermine Burkina Faso, specifically mentioning a center of operations in Abidjan designed to destabilize his country. The political dynamics between these nations are complex, and Traoré's accusations suggest a significant rift. Ivory Coast and Benin, both former French colonies, maintain strong ties with France. The leadership of these countries, particularly under Presidents Alassane Ouattara of Ivory Coast and Patrice Talon of Benin, has been criticized for aligning closely with French interests. Traoré's allegations suggest that this alignment extends to actively working against Burkina Faso's stability. The center of operations in Abidjan, as described by Traoré, is a critical element of his accusations. If true, it would indicate a coordinated effort involving high-level officials in both Ivory Coast and Benin. This raises questions about the motivations behind such actions. Are these leaders acting under French influence, or do they have their own interests in destabilizing Burkina Faso? The strategic location of these countries makes them significant players in regional politics. Ivory Coast, with its economic power, and Benin, with its strategic ports, are crucial for any regional power dynamics. Traoré's allegations, therefore, suggest a high-stakes geopolitical game where Burkina Faso is caught in the middle. Traoré's criticisms extend beyond mere political actions. He warned that the people of Ivory Coast and Benin would suffer the consequences of their leaders' actions if these destabilizing efforts did not cease. This statement indicates a potential escalation of tensions with possible repercussions for the broader region. Traoré's call for the people of Ivory Coast and Benin to speak to their leaders and advocate for a change in policy underscores the gravity of his accusations. He suggests that these actions are not in the best interests of the citizens of these countries, framing it as a broader regional issue rather than a bilateral conflict. As we delve deeper into the evidence Traoré promises to reveal, the involvement of French military bases becomes a crucial aspect of understanding these allegations. President Traoré has hinted at possessing substantial evidence to support his claims against France and its alleged use of military bases in Ivory Coast and Benin. He mentioned the existence of runways over 3,000 meters long used for planes to land and for training terrorists. Furthermore, he referred to audio recordings of French agents interacting with terrorist training centers in Benin. The specific nature of this evidence is critical. Audio recordings can be a powerful form of proof especially if they demonstrate French agents' involvement in training terrorists. However, the authenticity and context of these recordings will be scrutinized. The locations of the runways and the nature of the training programs also need to be verified independently to strengthen Traoré's claims. If Traoré can substantiate these allegations with clear, incontrovertible evidence, it would have significant ramifications. It could lead to international condemnation of France's actions and strained diplomatic relations between France and other African nations. Moreover, it would bolster Traoré's position domestically, portraying him as a leader willing to stand up to powerful foreign influences. The release of this evidence could also prompt investigations by international bodies and human rights organizations. These investigations could validate Traoré's claims or expose discrepancies, thereby influencing public opinion and international policy. The potential for backlash against France and its allies in the region is significant. Should Traoré's evidence hold up under scrutiny, it would likely result in increased anti-French sentiment and calls for greater autonomy from foreign influence across West Africa. This could galvanize other African leaders and populations to push back against perceived neocolonialism. President Ibrahim Traoré mentioned the existence of runways over 3,000 meters long used for planes to land and for training terrorists. Furthermore, he referred to audio recordings of French agents interacting with terrorist training centers in Benin. The specific nature of this evidence is critical. 
Audio recordings can be powerful proof, especially if they demonstrate French agents' involvement in training terrorists. However, the authenticity and context of these recordings will be scrutinized. The locations of the runways and the nature of the training programs also need independent verification to strengthen Traoré's claims. If Traoré can substantiate these allegations with clear, incontrovertible evidence, it would have significant ramifications. It could lead to international condemnation of France's actions and strain diplomatic relations between France and other African nations. Moreover, it would bolster Traoré's position domestically, portraying him as a leader willing to stand up to powerful foreign influences. The release of this evidence could also prompt investigations by international bodies and human rights organizations. These investigations could validate Traoré's claims or expose discrepancies, thereby influencing public opinion and international policy. Furthermore, the existence of such evidence would necessitate a re-evaluation of France's role in the region. It could force a shift in military strategies and diplomatic relations, impacting not only Burkina Faso, but the entire West African region. The geopolitical ramifications of such revelations would be far-reaching, potentially altering alliances and power dynamics. The potential for backlash against France and its allies in the region is significant. Should Traoré's evidence hold up under scrutiny, it would likely result in increased anti-French sentiment and calls for greater autonomy from foreign influence across West Africa. This could galvanize other African leaders and populations to push back against perceived neocolonialism. With the potential release of such explosive evidence, the role of the citizens of Ivory Coast and Benin becomes even more critical in addressing these allegations. President Traoré has called on the citizens of Ivory Coast and Benin to speak to their leaders and advocate for policy changes. He stresses that the actions of their leaders are not only detrimental to Burkina Faso, but also to the interests of their own countries. This call to action is a significant part of his strategy to combat what he perceives as external interference. Traoré's appeal to the people suggests that he believes public opinion can influence political decisions. By mobilizing citizens to demand accountability from their leaders, he hopes to create internal pressure that could lead to a change in policy. This approach aligns with the broader themes of democracy and self-determination, emphasizing the power of the people to affect change. For the citizens of Ivory Coast and Benin, this presents a complex dilemma. On one hand, responding to Traoré's call could lead to increased scrutiny of their government's actions and potentially result in policy changes. On the other hand, it could also lead to political unrest and instability within their own countries. The effectiveness of this strategy will depend on the level of public support Traoré can garner and the willingness of the citizens to engage in political activism. It also hinges on the transparency and credibility of the evidence Traoré presents. If the evidence is compelling, it could galvanize public opinion and lead to significant political shifts. The implications of such public mobilization are far-reaching. Successful pressure from the populace could redefine the political landscape in Ivory Coast and Benin, challenging the status quo and potentially leading to a shift in power dynamics. However, it also risks a backlash from entrenched political interests and potential crackdowns on dissent. Furthermore, Traoré's call to action highlights a broader trend of increasing political activism and engagement across Africa. Citizens are becoming more aware of their rights and the power of collective action, leading to greater demands for transparency and accountability from their leaders. Understanding the historical context of Burkina Faso's struggle for independence and the impact of foreign interference provides deeper insights into Traoré's motivations and the broader implications of his allegations. Burkina Faso's history is marked by a persistent struggle for independence and resistance against foreign domination. This historical context is crucial in understanding President Traoré's allegations against France and neighboring countries. By highlighting the historical role of Burkina Faso as a base for terrorist activities, Traoré is drawing attention to the long-standing impact of foreign interventions on the country's stability. The struggle for true independence is a recurring theme in Burkina Faso's history, and Traoré's speech taps into this narrative. By framing his allegations within this historical context, he aims to rally domestic and regional support for his stand against foreign interference. The broader implications of these historical struggles resonate with other African nations facing similar challenges. Traoré's emphasis on sovereignty and self-determination 
echoes the sentiments of many African leaders and activists who seek to free their countries from lingering colonial influences. The legacy of leaders like Thomas Sankara, who led Burkina Faso from 1983 until his assassination in 1987, and their fight for independence serves as a powerful reminder of the ongoing struggle for autonomy and respect. Traore's stance against what he perceives as neo-colonial actions by France and its allies is a testament to this enduring fight. Burkina Faso, formerly known as Upper Volta, gained independence from France in 1960, but the legacy of colonialism has continued to influence its political and economic landscape. One of the most notable figures in Burkina Faso's history is Thomas Sankara, who led the country from 1983 until his assassination in 1987. Sankara was a staunch anti-imperialist who sought to break free from neo-colonial influences, implementing policies aimed at self-sufficiency and national pride. His assassination, widely believed to have been orchestrated with foreign involvement, underscores the dangers faced by leaders who challenge external powers. Traoré's allegations can be seen as a continuation of Sankara's legacy, emphasizing the need for Burkina Faso to assert its sovereignty and resist external interference. By highlighting the historical role of Burkina Faso as a base for terrorist activities, Traoré is drawing attention to the long-standing impact of foreign interventions on the country's stability. The struggle for true independence is a recurring theme in Burkina Faso's history, and Traoré's speech taps into this narrative. By framing his allegations within this historical context, he aims to rally domestic and regional support for his stand against foreign interference. Furthermore, the broader implications of these historical struggles resonate with other African nations facing similar challenges. Traoré's emphasis on sovereignty and self-determination echoes the sentiments of many African leaders and activists who seek to free their countries from lingering colonial influences. The legacy of leaders like Sankara and their fight for independence serves as a powerful reminder of the ongoing struggle for autonomy and respect. Traoré's stance against what he perceives as neo-colonial actions by France and its allies is a testament to this enduring fight. President Ibrahim Traoré's bold accusations against France and neighboring countries have sparked a wide range of reactions among the people of Burkina Faso. The nation, with its complex history of colonialism and a strong sense of national pride, is experiencing a wave of emotions and opinions in response to these claims. A significant portion of the population has rallied behind President Traoré, viewing his allegations as a necessary stand against neo-colonial influences. Many Burkinabi see Traoré as a defender of their sovereignty and independence, echoing the legacy of leaders like Thomas Sankara, who championed anti-imperialist policies. Public demonstrations and social media campaigns in support of Traoré's stance have become increasingly common, reflecting a strong nationalistic fervor. Angry protesters targeted the French embassy in Burkina Faso's capital, Ouagadougou, for a second day in a row, setting fire to barriers and throwing stones at the building. Amid the tension, there is a growing call for regional unity and solidarity among West African nations. Many citizens believe that addressing these issues collectively rather than through confrontation would be more beneficial. This sentiment is rooted in the idea that regional cooperation can help mitigate external influences and promote mutual stability and development.